Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord. That's why we're here this morning. And take it to the Lord. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare. Just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord. Leave it there. Oh, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord. Leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, if your body suffers pain and your health you can regain and your soul is almost sinking in despair. Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save. He can heal. Take your burden to the Lord. Just leave it there. Well, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord. Leave it there. If you trust, don't doubt. He'll surely bring you out take your burden let's try that last verse now when your youthful days when your youthful days are gone and old age is stealing on and your body bends beneath the weight of care he will never leave you then he'll go with you to the end Take your burden to the Lord. Leave it there. Just leave it there. Just leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord. Oh, leave it there this morning, brother, sister. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden. To the Lord and leave it there. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, so good to be out at the house of God and see everybody out. Smiling faces. Amen. You're happy you're a Christian on this beautiful morning. It's good to serve the Lord. Amen. Just we welcome all our visitors this morning. And I see Scott back there. Amen. Good to see you, brother. Amen. Brother Juan, would you mind coming this morning? Amen. And open this day of worship with prayers. We, amen, worship him and gather around his word. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, Lord, how we thank you, dear Lord, Father, God, for this call that you put in us, Lord, Father, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to forgive us of all our shortcomings this morning, Lord, Father, God. So they may be many, Lord, Father, but nothing's too great for you, Lord, Father, God. For we serve a mighty God who can do anything, Lord, Father, God. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Lord, Father, God. Bless everyone here, Lord, Father, God. May your spirit just come down, Lord, Father, God, in each and every heart, Lord, Father, God. Lord, we ask you to walk up and down the aisles, Lord, Father, God. Be with the musicians, Lord, Father, God, with our song leader, Lord. But most of all, Lord, be with our pastor, Lord, Father, as he springs those forth. Those words that help us so much, Lord, Father, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, all these things, Lord, in your mighty name of Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Let's sing that. The cloud in the fire, 177. Amen. This morning. The key is C. You on a journey? Amen. This is not our home. We, like the children of Israel, we're just journeying, following the sign, following God, depending on Him for every need we have. Amen. 
as of old when the host of Israel were compelled in the wilderness to dwell, trusting they in their God to lead the way to the light of perfect day. Oh, so the sign of the fire by night oh and a sign of the cloud by day hovering o'er just before as they journey on their way oh shall a guide and a leader be Oh, tell the wilderness be past. Oh, for the Lord, our God, in His own good time, shall lead to the light at last. And to and fro as a ship without a sail, not a compass to guide them through the veil, but the sign of their God was ever near, thus their fainting hearts to cheer, so the sign of the fire by night. Oh, and the sign of the cloud by day, it's hovering o'er, oh, just before, oh, as they journey on their way, oh, shall a guide and a leader be, oh, tell the wilderness be past, oh, for the Lord, our God, in his own good time, shall lead to the light at last. Days of their wanderings, they were fed to the land of the promise they were led by the hand of the Lord in God and sure they were brought to Canaan shore so the sign of the fire by night and the sign of the cloud by day it's hovering o'er, oh, just before, as they journey on their way. And shall a guide and a leader be, oh, till the wilderness be, it'll be over soon, for the Lord our God in his own good time shall lead to the light at last. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's sing that chorus again as our brothers come to take the offering. We've got a sign. Oh, so the sign of the fire by night. And the sign of the cloud by day of renewal just before as they journey on their way and shall a guide and a leader be tell the wilderness be past. For the Lord, our God, in his own good time, shall lead to the light at last. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we're, Lord, we know what we believe in this hour, God. 
Just love that old song, God. The sign, the same signs that the children of Israel vindicating their journey through the wilderness, Lord, that you would get them to that promised land, that you were with them, Lord. Same signs in this hour. Oh, God, we believe this morning. As we take this offering, we ask that you bless it. Bless your people as they give. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a closer walk. Let's sing that B flat, 124. Amen. Oh, praise his name. He is our perfect strength this morning. Amen. Mm. Oh, I am weak, but thou art strong. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk. Close to Thee. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, just sing it to Him. Lord, I want to walk closer to You. God, I want to live by Your side every moment of the day. Oh, grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee, oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. And through all this world of toils, and snares. Amen, Lord. Oh, if, if I fall, Lord, if I make a mistake, Lord, who cares? The blood is there this morning. And who with me, my bird? Who is it this morning? Shares your burdens. Oh, none but Thee, dear Lord, none but Thee. Just a closer walk, Lord. And just a closer walk with Thee. Amen. Oh, grant it. Jesus is my plea, daily walking, Lord, oh, day, daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Now when, oh, my feeble, that day's going to come, brother, sister. We got to cross Jordan. Oh, time for me will be no more. I want to know you in that day, Lord. Just guide me safely gently oh oh to thy kingdom shore to thy shore let's sing with all our heart now and just 
a closer walk with Thee. Oh, grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it, let's sing that last verse again. Oh, I'm so glad we know him this morning. Oh, when my feeble, as it starts to fail, my life going from me, Lord, growing older, all the time for me will be no more. Guide, guide me safely on to the kingdom shore. You. Let's all stand. Amen. This morning. Don't you just love them? Oh, hallelujah. It's no secret what God can do. Amen. He answers prayer this morning. You believe it? We serve a miracle working God. Be flat. Amen. As we take our needs and petitions before the Lord, let's sing that. It is no secret what God, what He can do for you this morning. What He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. Oh, it is no secret. What? Let's try that last verse. Amen. There is no night. There is no night, for in His light I know you'll always be. You'll always feel at home. Oh, you're not alone. There's no power. There is no power can conquer you while he is at your side. Just take him now this morning at his promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do just believe this morning what he's done for man down through the ages he'll do it for you amen in this service this morning oh with his arms wide open he'll pardon you it is I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Amen. As we come to the part of his service, we bring our needs. Amen. We believe God answers prayer. It's no secret this morning. No. Amen. We have a couple written requests. First one's from our sister, Annette. She just asked prayer for her daughter, Selena, who's had oral surgery yesterday. She's still in a lot of pain. Please pray. Speedy recovery. 
Amen. And thank you. And God bless you. So let's remember Selena this morning also from Sister Monica. She writes, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, please pray for my daughter, Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Sorry. Amen. She's not feeling well. And also for my mom, that God will heal her. Praise his name this morning. Every unspoken request now. Amen. God knows every need, doesn't he? Amen. He's, yes, he does. So let's just go before him and pray, believing, sincere, God. Amen. We'll honor our faith. He'll do his part if we do our part, and that's believe and live consecrated before him. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we come, Lord, to Present these needs, Lord, before you, Lord. And every unspoken request, Lord, your people raise their hand, Lord, and acknowledge that they need you this morning, Lord. God, we got our hands raised, God, both hands, Lord. We're a needy people, Lord, and you're a mighty God this morning. So, Lord, we bring little Selena here this morning having oral surgery, God, at you just give her a touch in her body. She's in a lot of pain. Lord, just deliver that pain and give her a speedy recovery, Lord, we pray. And also for the little daughter of Sister Monica, Lord, just touch her this morning. God, she's not feeling well. And also her mother, Sister Deborah, Lord, a mighty warrior of the faith, Lord, also not feeling well. We just curse that sickness on her, Lord. Heal her body, Lord. And Lord, every unspoken request, Lord, we again as we come. God, we need you this morning, God. Maybe a physical need, Lord, spiritual need. We all need a closer walk, God. And sick among us this morning, touch them, God, and heal them, Lord, of your healing power, Lord. God will be careful to give you the honor and the glory and the praise and the blessed name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise his name. It's so good to serve him this morning. You ready for the word of the Lord now as we change the order of the service and our pastor comes? Amen. Also see Brian back there. Didn't see you at first, Brian. If you came in, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Isn't God good? Let's sing that. Key of C, 280. God is. Sometimes the clouds hang low, brother, sister. That's just the way it is. I like to see him go. Amen. But he knows what's best this morning. So let's start with that. That second verse, sister, amen. Sometimes the clouds hang low. They do. I'd like, I'd like to see them go. I'd like not to have trials. And I ask the question, Lord, oh, why so much pain? But does he know what's best this morning? But he knows what's best for me. Although I cannot see. What's your testimony? I just say thank you, Lord. I can't complain. Sing with all your heart. God is so good to me. He is so good to me. More than this world could ever be. He's so good to me. And His Spirit came to me and he gave me victory God is so good to me 
I can't complain. First verse. Oh, I have bad days, and I have hills to climb. Then I have sad days, and then a weary mind. Oh, but when I look. About and I think these things all out, all of the good things outweigh the bad things, and I can't complain. so many people out to the house of the Lord. It's just wonderful to, to be here. <coughs> Amen. And just appreciate the presence of the Lord, the worship, and the Spirit of God just coming down and blessing His people. Amen. Amen. God, God, is, God is real. Amen. God is real. When God comes close to the believer, you know, it's just amazing how the Spirit of God can just fall in a group of people and maybe just strike one person, and that person's just uh, taken into another realm, just by by themselves, just worshiping God in another dimension, and, and just shut in with God in a secret place, as the song goes. And then the person next to them, you know, not even know what's going on, or, or not even feel the presence of God. Amen. But it's... I'm so glad that it's whosoever will. Whosoever will, let him come and drink. Whosoever is a thirst, see, let him come and drink. See, and that Jesus, the Bible says, speaking of the Holy Spirit, see, which is the water, see, the smitten rock, the water of life that we drink, see, the body of Jesus Christ that we're baptized into by one spirit and made to drink of, of the same water. Yes. See, see, he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water. One water, one Holy Spirit. Yes. See, planted by the rivers. Rivers, nine spiritual gifts, nine fruits of the spirit. Yes. Giving forth his fruit, see, in his season. Amen? Amen. Praise God. This is the season. Amen. We're in that season. Praise God. I, I believe that with all my heart. God bless everyone this morning. Good to see you. Scotty, God bless you. Good to see you. Your little baby there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brian, God bless you too. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for coming to church and Sister Stephanie, Griggs, and your family there. God bless you. Just everyone here. We just appreciate you. All our visitors back there. Our brother here. God bless you from the Bay Area. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, you and your wife. Amen. Then uh, we want to. God bless you, brother. Amen. Brother Sean. God bless you. Amen. Okay. We want to continue our subject here on restoring the bride tree. Restoring the bride tree. We spoke a little bit on Wednesday. Now, uh, uh, just before I forget, I won't be here next Sunday. 
because we're going to, we'll be leaving Wednesday night, so we'll be here Wednesday. Uh, Brother Larry, you'll be here Wednesday. Brother Raul, Brother Tommy, amen, in charge of the services. At, uh, but we'll be leaving Wednesday for Arizona. Uh, uh, my niece is getting married, Karina, and so we're, uh, we've accepted the invitation to go to the wedding there in Arizona. And uh, so we'll be there, and we won't be back until Sunday night. So just, just letting you all know that I won't, won't be here, because I appreciate when you let me know when you're not going to be here. <laughs> so when you let me know if you're not going to be here, I appreciate it. Don't, don't think I don't, because you're missed when you're not here. Yeah. Amen. So I'm just letting you know out of courtesy that uh, but, uh, the brothers will be handling the services. And brother, you'll be leaving too for the wedding. Um, <clears throat> but you won't be here Sunday. Because the brothers, the ministry here will be handling the services. Amen. And uh, brother Vince, you, you will be here. Where's brother Vince? Brother Vince? Yeah. Well, brother Vince, uh, you won't be here Wednesday. Okay. But you'll be back Thursday. Thursday and you'll be here for the weekend. So our brother Vince, uh, brother... Uh, Vince, uh, he'll, he will be in charge. He's the, he's the deacon, so he will be in charge. Okay? So let us turn to Joel, the first chapter. to turn to Joel, the first chapter, verse 11 and verse 12. Let's read it together. Could we read it together? Be ye ashamed, O ye husbandmen, howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished, the vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree the palm tree also, and the apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Okay, so now we want to read also Joel floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank thee for this privilege. Come into your house, Lord to honor the day of the resurrection, which should always be here on Sunday morning, Lord, out of respect and honor as a memorial of that great day when you resurrected from the dead and you brought with you all those saints of old and took them into paradise with you. And Father, we are so thankful and grateful that there is coming another day when Christ will come and those that are in Christ will God bring them with him and we shall rise Lord if we are dead and gone on we shall rise from the dead if we are alive and we shall be changed Father and we shall go to meet thee 
in the air to be with thee forever, we pray. And ask your blessing, Lord, upon this word. Bless it, Lord. Bless it to our hearts. Those that are listening by way of streaming, we pray that you bless them, God. Lord, we pray that you come down in this service, this morning, this day, Father. Make yourself real to us, Lord. Father, that we can truly say, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. For you said, I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the age, Father. We believe in your word, and we trust that thou art with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Why don't you turn to somebody next to you and say, God bless you, pilgrim. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's so good. You may be seated. Now, I've done the scripture that I wanted to, to read here in Matthew 24, the 32nd chapter, to go along with these scriptures that we read here. Matthew 24 and verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When, now, who is the fig tree? Israel. Israel is the fig tree. That's right. Learn a parable of the fig tree. Now remember, natural Israel is a type or parallels spiritual Israel or the church. Natural Israel parallels the, the church. How many, everybody understand that? that? That the natural church, Israel, when God called Israel out of Egypt, they are a type of the, the church of, of today. Or the, the, the church, the, the archetype of the Gentile church down through the seven church ages. Amen. That God has called. Is that right? So, so God called us just like he called Israel out of Egypt. He called the church out of Egypt. Spiritually speaking, the world. He called us out of Egypt to journey through the wilderness under sanctification. And then uh, uh, crossing over Jordan over into the promised land, see? So, so we're, we're heading to a land, see? We're in the Holy Ghost land, but we're heading into a literal, literal, physical land that Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Is that right? My Father's house are many mansions. So, so we're, we're going to that place. That is our hope. See, that, that is our hope. Now, when we meet Jesus in the skies, he will take us to that place. See, when we meet him in the heavens, in the air, see, at the rapture, at the coming of Christ, he will take his church into, into that place where he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be also. Is that right? Amen. So we're, we're on a journey. That's why. It's just so important not to lose focus and always stay encouraged. And you have to encourage yourself see, with the word of God, see, with the hope and the calling that God has placed in you. You have a high vocational calling. It's the highest calling that you could possibly attain to or receive in your life is the calling to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So... Now, uh, we, we want to read here, finish reading, 24, 32. I get carried away into uh, talking, and uh, I, I lose my train of thought here. Matthew 24 and verse 32. And now learn a parable of the fig tree. That's Israel. Everybody knows that. All scholars, all students, all, they all agree. The fig tree is Israel. See, when his branch is yet tender, see, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. See, in other words, that the, the harvest is, is right. It's, it's time for the harvest. We are, we are now in that season, see, 
That's, we're here on the threshold of it right now. So, now the gospel will soon go back to the Jews. Right now, God's calling his Gentile bride. And when the last member of the Gentile church comes in, the door is closed. Is that right? We know the door can't stay open all the time. God held the door open in the days of Noah for so long. See, but then the angel closed the door, and they wanted to get in. Well, they couldn't because the angel closed the door. And so it was, it was then time for judgment. So before the judgment, before the judgment time comes, the church will go up. See, Lot came out, Noah went in, and the church goes up. Is that right? Lot came out of Sodom, and, and Noah, he went into the ark, but the church, the bride, she goes up. See, she escapes the judgment. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so, so when his branch is yet tender, putteth forth leaves. Remember, leaves always represents Pentecost. Is that right? The leaves on that fruit tree, I will restore, always represented the Pentecost. See, the Holy Spirit, the coolness, the freshness of the Spirit. When his branch is yet tender, see, and putteth forth leaves, you know that the summer is nigh. You see, when the branch is yet, yet tender, if that, if that Pentecostal tree ever puts forth another branch, it'll be the same. It'll be like the original, like on the day of Pentecost. And it'll write a book of Acts. So, so we know because the leaves have already come forth. See, the natural typing the spiritual. We're the spiritual church, spiritual bride, the spiritual Jew or the spiritual Israel. Amen. Not the literal Jews. We're not talking about it. We're, we're, we're applying it spiritually speaking, that the parallel between natural and spiritual. See, so we know then that, that we believe in, in the Pentecostal blessing. So we know that the, the, the harvest is, is, is right here. We're right on it. And uh, that branch has got to, when it brings forth the fruit, it'll be like the original. Is that right? And what will it do? It'll write a book of Acts. It'll write a book of Acts. So we're on the threshold of it right now. So don't let it bypass us. Amen. Don't, don't let it, uh, don't miss it. Don't miss what God wants to do in your life. God wants to do something in your life. And don't allow the enemy to deceive you or to distract you or to discourage you, or to take away your joy, your victory, uh, to uh, just discourage your walk with the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to do that. Amen. You have to stay prayed up. You have to stay prayed up, prayed up. You have to read his word and, and encourage yourself. Amen. Now, so uh, getting back now here to these scriptures here, God uh, uh, during this time of Joel's prophecy here, the, the, the church that was, that was Israel, God's chosen people, see, because when Israel was in Egypt, they weren't the church. See, they weren't the church until they come out of Egypt. Then they were the church. So, uh, but here in the reading of these scriptures, during this time, they were in a backslidden condition just before the coming of Jesus Christ, his first advent. Now, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon this prophet Joel, as we spoke Wednesday night, and he foresaw things, see? Joel foresaw things. Uh, he was God's prophet, and he saw the spiritual condition of the Jews, how that they had fallen into idolatry, see, and apostasy, and had gotten away from the commandments of God, Jehovah, you see. And in the beginning, they had great kings like David and, and Solomon and Josiah and a few good righteous, God-fearing leaders. But then they had got a king by the name of who? Ahab, Ahab. And he married who? Jezebel, a heathen from an idolatrous nation, see? And they, they led the whole nation of Israel into idolatry, you see? And now it's important to understand that God has always tried to get his people to come back to him. 
You see, uh, if he sees them going wrong, he sends them prophets and preachers and messengers to tell them and warn them that they must get back to God because, th because they are his people. See, and, and, and he's made a covenant. He made a, God made a covenant with, with himself through Abraham. See, that, that he would save the seed of Abraham. How many seed of Abraham here? God made a covenant with, with himself. He didn't make it with Abraham. He made it with himself. See, for Abraham and Abraham's faith seed. His faith seed, spiritually speaking, that's his church. Amen? So, he promised to bless that seed and multiply his seed like the stars in heaven. See, you ever go out at night and see all those stars? There's millions of stars. And, and beyond our galaxy, there's millions more. There's millions of galaxies. It's, it's innumerable. And so, uh, that, uh, we see that God promised to bless his Abraham's seed and bless them like the, like the sand on the seashore. See, God has always tried to make a way for man to come back to him. See, when Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, what did Adam do? What did Adam do? He hid himself. He put fig leaves. They put fig leaves, Adam and Eve, and they, they ran away, and they hid themselves because fear came upon them. What a contrast from when God would come down in the cool of the evening and he would fellowship with them. He would commune with them. He would talk to them, lip to ear. God would come down and speak to Adam and Eve. Is that right? Amen. That's right. They had access to the holiness to God because there was perfect peace, perfect unity, perfect love, perfect joy. They didn't get old. See, they were continually renewing their youth because they were eating from the, what? Tree of life. They were eating from the tree of life. Jesus said, I'm that tree of life that came down from heaven. I'm the bread of life that came down from heaven, which is the tree of life, same thing, that if a man eat of, he shall never die. You will never die. Amen. If you do, God will just raise you up again. Amen. Amen. And you'll, you'll, you'll go into a body which you'll always stay young. The, yeah, like, like, like you were when you were 21 or 22. When, when you were in the splendor of your youth. Young and, 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 and beautiful and handsome and, and whatever. It, it will, everything that's not right here will be made right over there. Absolutely. Amen. Never to get old. Never to, to cry or weep or to know heartache. Never to, to, to know death again or pain or suffering. Never to know discouragements or, or defeat or any of those things. Sadness or separation. My, it'll, it'll be one great eternal time with the Lord God and his people. Amen. That, that is the absolute truth. It, it, it is uh, so, uh, it pays to serve God. It pays to serve God and live for him. The Bible says, eyes not seen, ears not heard. The things that God's prepared for those that love him. So, so uh, when Adam fell, then God went looking for him. He said, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Where, where are you? See, he should have went to God, confessing his sin. See, but instead he was hiding. And, and God was seeking him out and making a way for him. And Eve to come back in fellowship with him. You, you see, and so he, he took off the fig leaves and he slew a lamb and, and he took the skin of the animal and, and, and clothed him with it. See, that lamb of God, it was, it was speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That, that, that we would be clothed someday with the lamb of God, the, the lamb of God, which is the sacrifice, which is the word of God that clothes us, that we won't be found naked in that day, but, but fully clothed in righteousness with the holiness and purity and goodness of God. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. So it's always been God seeking man. See, and man, he always runs from God. See, look at Moses, the Apostle Paul, Jonah, and all down through the Holy Scriptures. It's been God seeking man. See, and, and Jesus said, no man can come unto me unless 
my Father which has sent me. See, who sent Jesus? His Father. See, he said, no man can come unless my Father which has sent me draws him. Draws him, see. So, so or, or the Father has to, to call him. See, so, so we see that we see that down through the scriptures that it's God calling man. So you, you feel an impulse. You feel a little gravity, a little pull down in your heart. That's, that's, that's the call of the Father. See, that's the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of people drown that call out. See, they, they substitute that, and they, they drown it out with the things of the world. See, they drown it out with other things with, so that they can't hear that still small voice that's speaking to them. You see, it's the Holy Spirit calling them, you see, to, to the Word of God, to their place in the body of Christ. Amen. So now, so uh, this prophecy here in Joel, like other prophecies, they have a compound meaning. This is important. This is an important lesson now, Sunday school lesson. I know you're attentive this morning. I, I, I catch your spirit, so you're, you're attentive, and that's good. See, all scriptures has a compound meaning, see? Now, th these scriptures that we read here in Joel is speaking of Israel and also the church in the last days. In the last days, see? A prophecy sometimes has a natural meaning. Then it has a spiritual meaning, you see? Now, that's why it's important to study the word. Remember, Jesus said, study the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, as we said, God deals with the Jews, naturally speaking, and he deals with the church, you and me, spiritually speaking. He deals with the Jews as a nation. Is that right? As a nation, as a people, group of people called out. But he deals with the Gentiles as individuals. Each one of us is an individual and he deals with us as individuals. And, and we, Israel will be born overnight. See, God will pour out his spirit upon Israel. And they will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. See, after they receive the message of the two witnesses, then, then uh, the Messiah will go to them and will baptize them with the spirit of God. And, and they will be born in one day. That's what the Bible says. Who hath heard of such a thing? See, the whole nation, that's 144,000. Now there's about 5 million Jews there in Palestine. But of the 5 million Jews, there's an elected remnant of 144,000 that are waiting for the Messiah. Amen. Is that right? They know. It's very, very close now. Now, so the natural land to the Jew is his homeland. The natural land to the Jew is the homeland, which is what? Hmm? Palestine. The natural land to the Jew is Palestine. Is that right? Palestine. The natural land. A and God drove them back. God drove the Jews, the natural Jew, back to Israel because they have to be there for the Messiah. will come to the 144,000 chosen Jews after God is finished with the Gentiles. Is that right? That's right. See? And Joel prophesied of the coming of the Holy Ghost of the day of Pentecost. See, hundreds of years before it ever happened. Is that right? Hundreds of years before it ever happened. Joel, he prophesied of the coming of Pentecost. See? Now, uh, we, we read about it. When the Apostle Peter preached his great sermon on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.14, he declared to them. Now, he, he was reading, he was, he was reiterating Joel, the prophecy of Joel. See? Ye men of Judah and all ye who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. Is that right? right. It's only the third hour of the day. See, you know, because uh, people, the Jews didn't drink that early. So he's telling them, these men are not drunk on that kind of wine. See, 
<laughs> See, it's not what you think he's telling them. But he, for, he says, but this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. See, Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28. And it shall be in the last days that I will pour out forth of my spirit on all flesh. See, irrespective of age, a, a sex, or rank, a, a race, or whatever. All mankind, he would pour out his spirit. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in the days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. Amen. This is to, the, to, to whosoever will. Amen. This is to Jews. This is to Gentiles. This is to Greeks. This is to who, whosoever will. Amen. Amen. God wants to pour out his spirit. See, because he, God is always looking to bless his people. God is always looking to fill his people and to dwell with his people. That's God's desire, is to dwell not only with his people, but inside of his people. In, that's why he said, I'll be with you, even in you. In you. This, what he's, this is the prophecy here. In Joel, right here in Joel is the prophecy. Joel predicted here hundreds and hundreds of years before Pentecost. Here And here Peter is, he is uh, quoting from Joel. Amen. Uh, the, the word of the prophet, God's word has to be fulfilled. It will not return to him void. Amen. It will accomplish that which it is purposed for. Amen. And Ezekiel, the, another great prophet, he, in Ezekiel 36, here, let, let's turn to it re, real quickly. This is important for us to understand, to, to get a picture here of what God has done in our hour here, in the day that we are living in. In Ezekiel chapter 36, and verse 25 or uh, verse 20, Ezekiel 36 and verse 24, the 24th verse. And let's read it together so we understand here what God has done in, in our day, you see. Together. For I will take you from among the heathen, see, and gather you out all of all countries and will bring you into your own land. See? See? Now, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 see, this is the, the restoration of the nation of Israel. See? The, the, uh, this is when uh, when God promised to restore the, the, the Jewish nation. Remember what he did. What, 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 did what, what did God do? He raised up Hitler. Now, listen close to this. He raised up Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, Eichmann. Those were dictators. What did those men do during World War II? During World War II. They persecuted the Jews. How many Jews did, were martyred? How many Jews? Six million. Six million Jews were martyred. Those are the Jews under the altar, under the what seal? The fifth seal. They cry, how long? How long? See? They cry for vengeance. They're crying for vengeance. The bride doesn't call, cry for vengeance. See, so we know that they aren't the bride. They are martyred Jews that were killed under these dictators, see? But now, there was a purpose behind all this. It, it, it was to drive the Jew back to their homeland, back to, to Palestine, see? It, 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 it drove them back to the homeland, and it, it caused these men to persecute the Jews, see? 200,000 thousand horsemen. Remember the Bible speaks about it? 200,000 thousand horsemen or, or demons at the river Euphrates, see, that were let loose under the sixth seal, see. 
and they, they persecuted uh, the Jews. They were let loose on these dictators, and, and that's why they came against the Jews. Now, so uh, let's, let's continue. God had a plan in all of this. So, so for I will take you from among the heathen. See, they were scattered. The Jews were scattered. You, you know that. Uh, after the, the, the fall uh, of the city of Jerusalem, Titus came in. And, uh, and uh, those that, that, that believed Jesus, they weren't caught in the city. But, but those that didn't rejected Jesus, they were in the city. And, and, and Titus surrounded the city for a year. And he, he, he starved them out. And you know the, the history, how did they, 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 they got starved out. And then when Titus went in there, he, he crucified them. And the blood, the history says, flowed out the gates of the city. And the Jews were scattered. They were scattered. They've been scattered for 2,000 years. But now they're in their homeland. So now the scripture is being fulfilled. See, for I will take you from among the heathen, see, and gather you out of all countries. They were scattered, see, and will bring you into your own land. You see, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, see, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. You see? See, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. See, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. It's all supernatural. See, the, the, the armor of God is all supernatural. The work of God is all supernatural. It, it has to be the Holy Spirit drawing us. See, it has to be the, the Spirit of God working through the individual, wooing you, calling you transforming you, giving you a stony heart. You had a stony heart. We all had stony hearts. God had to take that hardness, that stony heart, and give you a tender heart, give you a heart of flesh, so you could receive the word, so the word could be planted in your heart. You see, a stony heart, remember when the seed fell on stony ground, the birds came and, and, and they picked on it, they ate it. See, it, it, it couldn't take any root because it was stony. But a fleshly heart or a tender heart, the word of God falls in there and it takes root. It takes hold. Then the word can establish you and, and you can be rooted in the promises of God. And then when the storms come, when the trials come, when the pressure comes, when the discouragement comes, when the temptation comes, see, you're, you hold. You're, you're, you're held. See, what's holding you? See, it, it, what's, what's holding you, see, is because you're rooted. You're rooted in the word of God. You're established. You're anchored in Christ. Amen. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. Is that right? Nothing can separate you. Now, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you, a, I mean, out of your flesh, give you a heart of flesh. See, now, and I will put my spirit, see, within you. See, that's the day of Pentecost. That's Joel 2.28. See, uh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, that's the, th this here. Ezekiel was prophet. He prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years. See, before Pentecost. And he's saying, I will put my spirit, what God is going to do. This is what God is going to do. Amen. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. See? Amen. Is that right? And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Isn't that wonderful? And I will save you from all your uncleanliness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. Oh, Brother, sister, are you in a famine? There's no reason for us to be in a famine. There's no reason for us. Now, the Bible said there would be a famine in the last days. Not for bread and water, but for hearing the true word of God. Now, I ask you, are you in a famine? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I, I don't feel that I'm in a, If I'm in a famine, I don't know it. I, I don't know it because I don't feel like I'm in a famine. Amen. 
and I say that by the faith of God and the revelation of Jesus Christ that has come in this hour to reveal uh, the mystery of the opening of the seven seals and to reveal Jesus Christ. He is alive here this morning. Jesus Christ is right here present this morning because he said wherever two or three, there's more than two or three here. Amen. There's much more than two or three. He said wherever two or three are gathered, I'll be there in the midst of them. Amen. What? To make himself real. To fulfill his promise. Oh my. See? So, so just as God promised to restore the Jewish nation, he also promised to restore the true church. Restore the true church and pour out his spirit upon the Gentiles for the rapture of the church. See? The true church is getting ready to leave this world. <laughs> I'm getting ready to leave this world. To meet Jesus in the, in the air. See, we're being restored. God is restoring us. See, God is putting on the fruit back on the bride tree. He's putting the fruit back. He, he's, he's putting the life. He's putting the bark, the canker worm make. He's, he's putting the, the, the leaves that the, the locusts ate, Pentecost. Amen. He, he's putting the fruit back on the tree. See, the Son of Man doctrine, the teaching of the Son of Man, the fruit of God. See, all nine spiritual fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, gentleness, kindness, faith, virtue, oh, on and on. There's no end to it, brother and sister. Amen. Jesus Christ, the tree of life, is, will rise again. Amen. He is alive. He's alive this morning. He's the tree of life. That's what we're eating off of. He's the tree of life. Jesus, the tree of life is in our midst. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, the fruit tree, the tree that was born on the day of Pentecost, the people of God call the church of God, have to be in the spiritual homeland at the coming of Christ, just like the Jew has to be in their homeland. The Jews got to be in their homeland to receive the Messiah, to receive the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Well, the church of the living God, you and I, we have to be in the homeland. See, the church is in the homeland, the Holy Ghost body of Christ. That's our homeland. How do we get into the homeland? How do we get into Christ? 1 Corinthians 12, 13. By one spirit are we baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, bond or free, and have been made to drink of one spirit. See, then, then what happened to them on the day of Pentecost? When 120 of them were in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came down upon them like a rushing mighty wind. See, and filled the house. They were sitting in and filled their houses. Amen. It filled their houses. Amen. It filled their tabernacles. Amen. See, a body has thou prepared me. What house will you build me? See, a body. You prepared me. God prepared him. We are that body. We are his representation of the body of Jesus Christ, baptized into his body by one spirit. See, and the Holy Spirit, what, what happened when the Holy Spirit baptized them into the body on the day of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit wrote a book of Acts with them. The Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit wrote a book of Acts. In them, see, it's the book of the Holy Spirit, the acts and works of the Holy Spirit, working through the apostles, what? Signs and wonders. See, now we're not looking for signs and wonders. See, we're looking for the giver. The giver. See, we don't seek signs and wonders. <laughs> we seek the giver. You can have the signs and wonders without the giver. Jesus said, many shall come to me in that day. Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we cast out devils? In your name we did mighty works? They had signs and wonders. But what happened to them? Jesus said, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So it's not the signs and wonders that we're looking for. But if you are a true believer in Christ this, and you have the giver, you have the giver of the signs and wonders, the signs and wonders will follow you. They will follow a true believer. Amen. Because, see, that's, that's, that's part of the, of the fruits of the tree. We're at the top of the tree now. The bark's been put on, the pulp, Luther's message, Wesley's message. The sanctification, the, the bark, uh, the Pentecostal message, uh, the, the leaves, and now the fruit. Where does the, 
Where, where does the fruit ripen at? At the top of the tree. We're at the top. It's ripening. That's why we've got to let the Holy Spirit ripen us. Amen. For, the, for, for, for summer is coming. The harvest is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming for his church. Amen. So here, so we, we, we just uh, uh, want to be prepared for that time. And Jesus is coming. Now, Jesus said, whosoever will. We're closing. Musicians, will you come? Now, I know I'm just uh, going over a little bit longer. I'm already 45 minutes here. But can you give me a few more minutes to wrap this up? Amen. Revelation 22 says here, and, 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 and Jesus said here, let him that is a thirst come. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. See, he also said in John 7, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living, what? Water. What does that mean? Out of his belly. See, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that's what it means. There, the next scripture after that. See, speaking of the Holy Spirit was to come. When did the Holy Spirit first come? When was the church inaugurated? See, on the day of Pentecost. See, that's the kind of church that God uh, established. He created on the day of Pentecost. And that was the original, the beginning. And that's the kind of church you'll have at the end. Amen. The same kind of church. Amen. So, so I believe that then that, that Jesus Christ is here in the form of the Holy Spirit this, this morning. I believe that. And the Bible said, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. See, you can touch him this morning. Just like the woman at the well. The woman at the well, I mean, I mean, excuse me, the woman with the blood issue. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. She had that problem. She said, I want to just touch the hem of his garment. See, she had faith. Of course, it takes faith. Brother. But when you hear the word of God, it builds faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if we don't hear the word of God, we can never have faith, the proper faith, the appropriate faith. We can never have it. Unless we're in the Word of God, we've got to read the Word. See, we've, we've got to ask God for, for, uh, for revelation, for faith. We have to ask Him, God, increase my faith so I can believe. Lord, I, I'm not seeking for signs and wonders, Lord. I, 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 I'm not a sign seeker. I want the giver. I want you, Father, living in my life. And I know that if you're living in my life, the scripture says, if I abide in you and you abide in me, ask what you will and it shall be done. It shall be done. Whatever you ask, God will grant it to you. Brother, sister, if you're in communion with God and you're in fellowship with him, you make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. If you were to follow me around, you'd see probably a lot of mistakes, a lot to criticize. But God's still working on me. Amen. God's still working on us. Amen. We're, we're, a, uh, uh, we're, we're a work in process, in progress. You see, so, so here, what I'm trying to say is that he's here this morning for you. Whatever you have need of. See, he, see, he told the woman at the well. What did he tell the woman? He said, he says, he says if you drink of this water, she was a Samaritan, a different race, you see. And they were supposed, supposed to mix, see. So he said, whosoever drinks of this water will never thirst again. Will never thirst. In other words, you won't want to go back to the world. See, once you drink of the Holy Spirit, once you drink of the good things of God, once you taste of eternal life, why would you want to go back to the world? Why would you want to go back to that? No, see, you wouldn't want to go back to it. Now, you could be tempted. You, you could be drawn to it, you know, uh, because of the flesh. Because we're two people. We're two people. Is that right? We're two people. And, and just like the, the missionary that, that went and converted the Indian chief, the Indian chief got converted. And then the, the missionary went back a year later, and he asked him, how are you doing, chief? 
And the chief said, well, I'm having a hard time. What's the matter, chief? Well, ever since chief get the Holy Ghost, I have two evil dogs in me. And, and one's good and one's bad. And uh, they're always fighting. And the, chief, and the missionary says, well, which one wins, chief? Well, the chief said, the one that chief feeds the most. That's the one that wins. The one that chief feeds the most, see? So th th you're, we're two people. We're a flesh man outside here, and we're an a, a, a inner man, a soul man, a spirit man, see, a supernatural man, a supernatural faith man, you see? And, and he contacts God. It's not this man that contacts God. It's not the outside man, the outer man, but it's the inner man. It's the inner man that contacts God by faith. By faith. You live by faith. You don't live by sight. Not, not by your senses, not by what you see, not by what your five senses see, taste, feel, smell, and hear, but what your faith declares to you, your revelation of what you hear in the word of God. You see, that's, that's what you walk by. See, so people here, uh, you can be healed right now. See, but it, it, you don't, we don't claim to have anything. I don't have any powers, any more powers than anybody else. No man has any power. See, the power is in Jesus Christ. He said, go up into the upper room. Go up into Jerusalem. Go to Jerusalem. Go to the upper room until ye be endued with power from on high. Amen. Then this power is going to come into you. I'm going to go away. Amen. But I'm going to come back. And I'm going to come back in the form of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to quicken you. I'm going to quicken that seed. And I'm going to quicken these promises. I'm going to come inside of you. Amen. I'm going to make this word live. And the same works that I did, you're going to do. Amen. You're going to do them. Amen. Because it's me working through you. Amen. So he can, you can receive it as all purchased for you at Calvary. You can receive whatever you have need of right now. You, you can have healing. You can have salvation. You can have uh, the Holy Ghost right now. You can have more of God, a deeper walk with God. Whatever you have need of your discouraged, if you can be encouraged this morning, if you're bound, if you're oppressed, uh, you can be set free this morning. See, Jesus died on Calvary at the cross to make all things possible. Jesus died on Calvary, amen, to restore back to the church what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. Amen. You can be born again right now, today, if you're, if you're just ready to die out to yourself and receive Christ into your life. See, it's all according to our faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Now you have to believe and receive what God has for you. It's for whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. See, why did all the patriarchs, like, like Job, listen to this one. Why did all the patriarchs like Job, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, they all wanted to be buried in Palestine, in their homeland. See, Joseph and Jacob didn't want to be buried in Egypt. No, uh-uh. They made sure. They made their, them take an oath. He says they wanted to be buried where the resurrection was going to take place. See, and when Jesus died, and resurrected, many of the Old Testament saints rose from the dead and appeared unto many in the city of Jerusalem, and they entered into paradise with Jesus. Is that right? See? And, and where does the, the, the church have to be today? In Christ. In Christ. Not in Palestine. That was for the natural Jew. That's where they are now. <laughs> in Palestine, but th that's typing the spiritual. The body of Christ is, she is all over the world. She's scattered in different places. Amen. And she, uh, she's down through the seven church ages, laying in the dust of the ground, the real treasures of God, those real Jews, that, I mean, those real Christians, martyrs, that went down in faith. See, under Paul's age, uh, under the uh, Martins and Luthers and Wesleys and Pentecost, down through the ages. See, they will come up in the resurrection. They are in Christ. They've been baptized into his body. And that's where we have to be, friends. We know that. We've got to be in Christ. Amen. That's our land. 
That's our land of promise. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let us stand. Amen. He's here this morning, friends. He's here to meet your need. He's here to heal you. He's here. He's here to save you. He's here to restore you. He's here to deliver you. He's here to encourage you, to inspire you. But you've got to believe his word. Don't let the word of God, when it comes, it's not my word. I'm just up here uh, representing the gospel. And I'm only repeating what the word says, you see. And so don't let the word of God, which is God's word, fall on you like it water on a, the back of a duck. It just rolls off, doesn't it? But be an absorbent. Absorb the word. Say, God, let, let this word fall on me and may I receive it. It's not the word of a man. It's the word of God. It's the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he wants to, to restore you. Amen. He wants to make you his son. Make you his daughter. Make you a king. Make you a priest. Give you eternal life. Eternal life to spend eternity with him. To, to be never to be old again, but to be young and, 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 and to live with him. It won't be long, friends. This is the last church age. There are no more ages. This is the Laodicean seventh church age. From here, the bride will be raptured up into the skies. Amen. This is this is rapture time. It's harvest time. Amen. Let's just serve him with all our hearts. Amen. If you have a need this morning, we'll pray for you. If you have a need this morning, we'll, we'll come, the ministries, and the ministry, and, and, and myself, and, and we don't have no power, friends. We don't have no power. We don't claim to have nothing. Amen. All power is in Him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We just say what He said. We just preach divine healing. We preach it, and we preach it like it's written. Amen. And, and, then, by faith, we believe that God will manifest it. Amen. And, and give you what you have need of. Amen. To encourage you in your walk with the Lord. To make you a strong Christian. To make you uh, an inspired Christian. That you would want to tell somebody else about the Lord Jesus. See, to make you a witness. Are you, are you witnessing the gospel? Do you want to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? See? See, when you have this witness in you, the Holy Spirit, it, it, wants to, it wants to speak about Jesus. See, let your light shine. It wants to tell somebody else. You say, well, I, I don't know how to talk. I, I don't know how to speak. Well, just tell them how it got lit. Just tell them how, how did it get lit. You mean, there's something just burning in your heart, burning in your soul. Th those words that you, that you hear, the word of God. Amen. It's, it's quickening you. It's, it's transforming you. The power of God will transform your life from a sinner to a saint. Amen. Amen. To a saint. You don't have to die to be a saint. Amen. You're alive and you can be a saint just by receiving Christ into your life. Amen. Whatever you have need of, friends, we're here to, to just be a help to the body of Christ. That's why I'm here. It's just not, it's not to be popular. It's, it's not to, to, uh, to uh, it, it isn't for any material reason. It, it isn't. It's just to be a help. It's to be a help to the body of Christ. If I can do anything to help you, to counsel you, to speak with you, something that would encourage you, you see, to, to further your experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm always available. I'm always there. Amen. Oh, praise God. Let's just meditate on him now. Just thinking about the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just, just think on him now. Whatever your need is, he's here to meet your need. Yes. And we want to pray for you. And I believe that the great healer, Jehovah God, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, the I'm the Lord God that healeth all thy diseases. He's here.
touching Jesus is all that really matters. Lord, help me this morning, God. Get out of the way and pray for these, Lord, that are coming. That you touch them and heal them, God. You meet their need. God, that you, you minister to them by the great Holy Spirit, Father. And you help them, Jesus. You know all about them. Jesus, we just ask it in your name. Touching Jesus. Could we sing that? Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Then your life will never be the One way to really touch him. Just believe when you call on his name. Oh, touch him, Jesus. You may sit down. You may sit the rest of the audience. Amen. You may, you may be seated. Yes. And, but if you have a need, you can come up. We'll pray for you. Your life will never be the same. For there's only one way to really touch. Amen. Sister, amen. You have a need. Two very special needs. Two special 